Okay, students, can you hear me? Please give me a yes if you can hear my voice. Okay, fantastic. So today we'll start a new chapter that is uh, bolted, riveted, and welded joints. Sorry, this is not a second chapter. This is actually the third chapter. We have already completed two chapters. So now we are starting with the third chapter. So is my screen visible to all of you? Is my voice clear to all of you? Please confirm me once. Okay, fantastic. My screen is visible. Is the PPT visible to you? Hold on. Yes, it should be visible now. Okay, now I hope that it is visible, right? I hope it is visible now. Can you hear me, all of you? Yes, fantastic. Now let me tell you, uh, give you a little bit of introduction. Okay, let me give you a little bit of introduction. This is chapter two, uh, sorry, this is chapter three. We have already completed two chapters. What are those? We have completed theory of failures and design against dynamic loading, right? Now, let me tell you, machine design is a highly numerical subject because it is completely design, design aspects have been taken care of, right? So we don't have much, much theoretical questions here, right? Small theoretical questions might be asked, Right, but there is not much basic concepts to be learned here. The concepts, the basics that you require in machine design, you have already learned in strength of materials. Right. So this is basically application subject. Right. So in application subject, we'll have most of the numerical problems. Right. And short one line numerical will not my are not very much feasible in this subject, right? So we'll concentrate on what, right? What exactly could be asked in your HCL exam, right? Now, the first two chapters, although they are part of machine design, this the first two chapters are actually a transition from strength of materials to machine design. So you might have seen good amount of theory in these two last two chapters. You might have seen good amount of theory in last two chapters, right? Chapter one and chapter two. So that is why we have taken the first two chapters as your theory of failures and design again dynamic load, dynamic load, because these two chapters contain good amount of theory from which good questions can be framed in your PACU exams, right? Okay, but now from now, whatever we are going to study. We'll study bolted, rivet, welted joint. This is highly numerical, right? There is not much concepts to be learned. Yes, whatever concepts are there, we'll definitely see, and we'll see the types of questions that can be asked. Okay. Thereafter, we'll have bearings, right? Bearings again, some amount of theory will be there, and again, calculation portion will also be there. We'll see what kind of questions that can be asked, right? Then we have gears, clutches, brakes, right? So whatever theory what is possible, whatever questions can be asked. Right, whatever questions can be asked, we'll try to cover up each and everything throughout uh, these lectures. Okay, so let us start with bolted, riveted, and welded joint. Okay, so as we know, the syllabus is for as as already cited, the syllabus will be off gate. Right, only the toughness of the questions will be lesser. Right, so we will follow the gate syllabus exactly. Right, okay. 
now let us classify joints first learn let us start from classification of joints let us start from classification of joints so if you if i want to classify joints if i want to classify joints right joints can be classified into permanent and non permanent let us try to understand what exactly is the meaning of permanent and non permanent let us try to understand what exactly is the meaning of permanent and non permanent if i say permanent it means if i say permanent it means if you try to remove the joint if you try to remove the joint right if joint is removed it will damage it will damage the part it will damage the part so whichever part was joined right it is it will going to called it is going to cause a damage to the part for example think is for example welding joint if you want to remove a oil welded joint right what will happen it will definitely going to damage the part right similarly bracing soldering adhesive right all this will damage the part right but there is a slight difference if i say riveted joints if i say riveted joints riveted joints are semi permanent why riveted joints can be removed undoubtedly but what happens how to remove a riveted joint for example if riveting is done carried out let me say riveting is carried out this is one plate this is one plate we are going to study what is a rivet joint take it this is another plate take it on the top of the first plate there is another plate cap and this is a two row riveting let me say two row riveting right this kind of riveting has been done so how to rivet how to remove a riveted joint right what we can do is we will simply drill the rivets we are going to simply drill the rivets this rivets ko kya karenge what we are going to do to do these rivets we will drill the rivets so if the rivets are drilled right the rivets will come out and we can remove the two base plates but again this will also cause a re repairable damage what will happen every time you drill a rivet right every time you drill a rivet you will have to use a drill bit slightly larger than the size of the drill you have to use a drill bit slightly larger than the diameter of the rivet so what will happen the whole of the rivet the whole of the rivet will will expand the diameter will expand so each time you de rivet a joint its diameter will expand so what is happening there is some amount of some amount of damage to the part is being caused right so but it can be removed the thing is that it can be removed that is why riveted joints are also called as semi permanent riveted joints are also called as semi permanent right but it is definitely not a easy task right what are examples of non permanent joints like bolted joints screw joints quarter joint keys and couplings all these are non permanent joints you can very easily remove and rejoin the joints right so it has been seen questions are asked from this right which of the following are permanent joint which of the following are non permanent joint this kind of questions can be asked in your exam okay what next let us enter into riveted joints let us enter into riveted joints right so riveted joints can be classified into lap joint and butt joint riveted joints can be classified into lap joint and butt joint what is a lap joint think if the joint is something like this means one above the other you are seeing the side view what you are seeing is the side view this is one plate this is the second plate you are seeing the side view you are seeing the side view and riveted rivets are placed like this this is called a lap joint what is this this is a lap joint right so lap joint can be single riveted double riveted triple riveted quadruple riveted i have just mentioned single and double here right it could be single riveted what do i mean by single riveted means now i am showing you the top top view i am what i am showing you is the top view now what i am showing you is the top view single rivet will look like this
is a three rivets per row. What will double rivet look like? Double rivet will look like something like this. What I'm showing you is the top view now. What I'm showing you is the top view. Double rivets will look something like this. So similarly, you can have triple rivet, quadruple rivet, right? So as the number of rows of rivets increases, the efficiency increases, right? As number of rows increases, the efficiency increases. Okay. Now let us come to let us come to butt joint. Let us come to butt joint, right? So what is butt joint? Butt joint is something like this. Now I am showing you the side view. This is one plate. The other plate is kept by the side of the first plate. And we are going to use cover plates on the top of this. This is a cover plate, right? One cover plate, it could be one cover plate, then it is called single cover plate. It could be two cover plates. Two cover plates, it will be called double cover plate. And then what we are going to do, we are going to rivet it this way. We're going to rivet it this way, right? So this is what is it called as butt joint, and this is what is called as lap joint. This is what is called as butt joint, and this is what is called as lap joint. Okay, again, butt joint, single cover plate can be single riveted, double riveted, triple riveted, quadruple riveted, right? Again. But joint double cover plate will be single, double, triple, quadruple, right? So how to choose a sing if it is going to be a single, double, triple, quadruple that is dependent on the strength of the joint you require, right? On the that is dependent on the strength of the joint you require. Okay. So now, if you see, if you want to design riveted joints, there can be three types of failures of riveted joints. There can be three types of failures of riveted joints. What are the three types of failures? The three types of failures are tearing failure of the plate, tearing failure of plate, then searing failure searing failure of rivets and then third is pressing failure of plate Okay. All three types of failures we are going to see. Okay. Again, questions are being fired here. What are the different failure modes of what are the different failure modes of riveted joints? Option A, tearing failure of plate. Option B, searing failure of rivet. Option D, C, crushing failure of the plate. Option D, none of the above or all of the above. Right. So, what will be the answer? All of the above. Now, please be careful. Right. Tearing failure of the plate. You'll get to learn why I'm writing plate here, why I'm writing rivets here, and again why I'm writing plate here. This is also something very important to keep in mind. Right? Okay. Before entering into that, let us see some different types of riveting. There can be two different types of riveting. What are those? It could be chain riveting or it could be zigzag riveting. So if you see chain riveting, if you see chain riveting, right? So the rows you can see, right? The rivets are, you can see parallel to each other. The rivets are just 
parallel to each other. But in zigzag riveting, it is not parallel. You can see the rivets are alternate, right? Different the rivets in different rows are alternate, right? So let us see some of the terms. Let us see some of the terms. What is this P? This P is called pitch. P is the pitch, right? That is the distance between two rivets is called pitch. The distance between two rivets is called pitch. What is M? M is called margin. Margin. What do I mean by margin? Margin means the distance of the last rivet and the end of the plate, right? You can see the distance between the last rivet and the end of the plate is called margin. Generally, the value of margin will be, generally the value of margin will be M is equal to 1.5 times D, where D is diameter of rivet. Where D is diameter of rivet. Yes, it will be on the other side also, right? So th the way it is M here, this is also M. This is also M. The length will be same actually. Okay. Here, picture may not clear, but this is also M. Okay. So sometimes this question is being asked, what is pitch? Generally, pitch ke baare mein nahi but margin is generally being asked. Okay. Chote chote essay questions, designing respective questions might be asked. So you please go through the, go through the, uh, the P, uh, PSU question paper, right? PSU question papers, right? Then you will get to understand. Now, for chain riveting, you have PD. What is PD? What is PD here? PD is diametral pitch. Because this is, this will be there only for, this will be there only for, Zigzag riveting, right? PD is equal to diametral pitch, right? And what is PT? PT is transverse pitch. PT is transverse pitch. So PT will be there here also. It's PT. PT, PT is transverse pitch. What is PT? PT is transverse pitch. Okay. Right. So first let us see what is the tearing failure of a rivet. Okay. Let us try to understand what is the tearing failure of a rivet. If I say tearing failure of a rivet, if I say tearing failure of a rivet, if I say tearing failure of a rivet, right? So now if I apply, suppose this is a, a this is a lap joint, okay? lap joint, you can see what is there in picture is a lap joint, right? Single riveting. As you can see, it is a single riveting, right? Only one row of rivet is there, right? So if you're applying tensile force, if you're applying tensile force, what kind of force you're applying here? Tensile force. What kind of force you're applying here is tensile force. So if you're applying tensile force, so what is going to happen is the rivets, the rivets might, the rivets, because you see, this is the whole plate. There are no holes here, right? This is, if you see the cross-sectional area, 
the cross sectional area of the upper plate of of the plate will be minimum here right can you understand this point that the cross section area of the rivet will be minimum here right because of the holes there are holes there are three holes in the plate so if there are three holes in the plate definitely what is going to happen the cross sectional area of the rib, of the plate will be minimum here so if the if the force exceeds the strength of the plate right if the force exceeds if the force because of the force if the stress at this area exceeds the shear or the tensile strength of the uh, material what is going to happen the plate will tear off at this point the plate is going to tear off at this point the plate will is going to tear off at this point and that plate will come apart the plate will come apart right so this is called the tearing failure of the plate right what it is called it is called tearing failure of the plate who what is failing here the plate is failing here what is failing here the plate is failing here what is failing here the plate is failing here right so if you want to see if you want to see right if t is the thickness of the failure what what is the maximum force that can be applied if you want to find out what is the what is the value of t max right that can be applied right so if t is the thickness of the plate if the t is thickness of the plate then limiting load per pitch length there are two ways to write this formula we can write this formula per pitch length or we can write this formula per width of the plate so per pitch length means this is this is per pitch length per pitch length okay this is per pitch length how many rivets are there per pitch length here can you tell me how many rivets are there per pitch length per pitch length what i'm asking you navin is per pitch length for one length i can see only one rivet right isn't it per pitch length in this much in this much length how many rivet is there half of the rivet is covered up here half of the rivet is covered up here so i can say per pitch length here in this case there is only one rivet isn't it are you understanding my point right here per pitch length there is only one rivet okay now if i see per pitch length okay what is the what is the cross sectional area per pitch length what is the cross sectional area per pitch length can i say cross sectional area per pitch length can i say it is equal to p minus d divided by multiplied by t what is p p is the pitch length right this p is the pitch length minus d means diameter of one rivet diameter of one rivet because there is one rivet l pitch length no no rivet means there is a hole there if you want to see the cross sectional view if you want to see the cross sectional view the cross sectional view will look like this the cross sectional view will look like this so, there are three rivets so this is one hole this is one hole this is second hole this is third hole right so if you want to see per pitch length if you want to see per pitch length from here to here is the thickness of the plate is t 
So what is the cross-sectional area? Can I say per pitch length P minus the dia of one rivet minus dia of one rivet multiplied by T? Yes or no? Can you tell me? Can I say cross-sectional area per pitch length is equal to P minus D into T? Yes or no? Yes, right? So, so if you see, if you see force divided by area, force, what is the force? Force, that is the tensile force divided by cross-sectional area. P minus D divided by T is equal to the stress generated. The maximum stress that can be generated is equal to sigma yt right so from this i can say i can say what is the pitch what is the from this i can say that the tensile strength the maximum tensile strength can be is equal to sigma yt you just cross multiply sigma yt pitch minus diameter into t now when is this formula valid this formula is valid if dia of hole is equal to dia of rivet dia of hole is equal to dia of rivet. So we don't have to worry, right? Whatever the dia of rivet is given, you can directly use it in this formula. Is this formula clear, all of you? Is this formula clear, all of you? Good. Now, sometimes what happens, the dia of hole and dia of rivets are not the same. Sometimes the dia of rivet and dia of holes are not the same, right? Sometimes the dia of hole will be larger than the dia of rivet sometimes what happens dia of hole is greater than dia of rivet right dia of hole is greater than dia of rivet in that case right even though both the diameters will be given in the equation both diameter of rivet will also be given in the equation diameter of hole will also be given in the equation right but to calculate the cross sectional area right to calculate the cross sectional area what exactly we are going to use is we are going to use the diameter of hole because it is tearing failure of the plate na it is tearing failure of the plate so for the plate for the plate if you see for the plate plate has the holes plate has the holes Right, so for the plate, what it is going to be, it is dia of hole. Right, so in that case, I can write, I simply modify this formula, P minus dia of hole into T. Right, PT is equal to sigma yt, P minus dia of hole into T. Okay, so I hope that Tearing failure of rivet is clear, right? So what you have to do is simply you have to remember this formula. आपको ये क्या करना है? अभी time कम है explain करने के लिए, ठीक है? तो what you have to do is you have to remember these two formulas, right? If dia of hole and dia of rivet are not equal, you have to use this formula. If dia of hole and dia of rivet are equal, you have to use this formula. Okay? Now, as I said, you can write this formula in two ways, per pitch length or per width, right? Per pitch length, per width, right? So what is this? This is the maximum force that can be applied. What is it? What, whatever you have obtained, whatever you have obtained, what is this? What is this? This is the maximum force. maximum tensile load that can be applied without failure maximum tensile load that can be applied without failure so if you have the if the apply load is below the whatever you have found out Right, what, what we have found out that is PT is equal to 
सिग्मा वाई टी टी माइनस टी इन टू टी राइट सो इफ दप्लाइड लोड इफ दप्लाइड लोड दिस इज वॉट दिस इज नथिंग एज बट दिस इज पी मैक्स is nothing else but this is nothing else but the pmax so if the applied load is less than pmax there will be no tearing failure perpetually right so now we can rewrite the formula for width right you can rewrite the formula you can rewrite the formula limiting load per width of the plate can be given as right so if you see if i redraw the plate again theek hai jaldi jaldi se redraw karte hain plate ko ek bar this is one plate theek hai then you have the second plate ठीक है देन यू हैव द रिवर्ट्स हियर लेट मी से 1 2 3 रिवर्ट्स राइट सो व्हाट इज द विड्थ ऑफ द प्लेट द विड्थ ऑफ द प्लेट इज w विड्थ ऑफ द प्लेट इज w हाउ मेनी रिवर्ट्स आर देयर देयर आर 3 रिवर्ट्स सो इफ यू वांट टू राइट द क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया हाउ वी कैन राइट द क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया नाउ क्रॉस सेक्शनल क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया इज इक्वल टू विड minus 3 times the diameter into t width minus 3 times the diameter into t right this is this will be the cross sectional area right in why 3 3 because there are three rivets here is it necessary that only three rivets will be there no there can be n number of rivets so in that case i am rewriting the formula as w minus n into d into t right rewriting the cross section area as w minus n into d into t right where n is equal to number of rivets per width and d is the diameter of the width of the rivet right this is applicable when dia of hole and dia of rivet are same similarly if the dia of hole is not equal to dia of rivet so what we are going to use is dia of hole in the formula right So this is nothing else but tearing failure of the rivet. You can write it in two ways. Okay. Now let us go to shearing failure of the rivet. Let us go to shearing failure of the rivet. Right. So that was this was tearing failure of the plate. The plate was getting teared. Right. So now the second way of failure is a shearing failure of the rivet. Right. So you are seeing the side view here. So this is the rivet. You can see, as you can see, this is the rivet. as you can see this is the rivet what can happen is what can happen is because of this applied load one plate the load is applied towards right load is in this direction on the other plate load is in this direction so what can happen their rivet can get a shear at the this portion the rivet can get sheared at this portion right so if you have single rivet so single rivet what will be the maximum force maximum shear force that can be applied what is the maximum force that can be applied that is the tau max that is the allowable shear stress of the material the rivet is constructed of into pi by 4 d square what is d here dia of rivet What is the here? Dia of rivet. Okay. So this is the shear strength for. This is the shear strength for a single rivet. Okay. Whatever formula we are calculating, this all formula is per pitch length. Is a formula you are seeing. Okay. This formula. ठीक है दिस फॉर्मूला इज पर पिच लेंथ यू आर नॉट कैलकुलेटिंग द फॉर्मूला पर विथ प्लीज रिमेंबर वी आर नॉट कैलकुलेटिंग द फॉर्मूला पर विथ ठीक है दिस फॉर्मूला इज डिफाइंड पर पिच लेंथ राइट सो इफ इफ द नंबर ऑफ रोज आर मोर फॉर एग्जांपल लेट मी कंसीडर If the number of rows are more,
for example like this one two three this first row second row okay let me say two rows are there okay now can you tell me per pitch length how many rivets are there per pitch length how many how many rivets are there yes very nice right per pitch length if i say per pitch length this is per pitch length if i say p right how many rivets are there one rivet from here half half one rivet from here half half one rivet from here so i can say per pitch length two rivets per pitch length two rivets right so now searing failure can happen only if both the rivets sears as are the possibility it is not possible that only one of the rivets will sear and the plate will fail no the plate will fail the joint will fail if all the rivets sears right all the rivets per pitch length sears right so if you're writing if there are n rows if there are n rows right if there are n rows okay so the formula for searing failure of the rivet the maximum shear force that can be applied will become tau max into n pi by 4 d square tau max is maximum shear force will be tau max into n pi by 4 d square where n is equal to number of where n is equal to number of rivets per pitch length now nahi aisa nahi hoga own dear be four pitch length own dear be four pitch length so this formula whatever we are writing is writing per pitch length yes whatever we are writing this formula we are writing this formula per pitch length why i am telling you okay why i am telling you for example okay thoda sa explain kar deta hu main aapko why I, why i am writing this formula as per pitch length because assume okay riveted joints can be very large okay riveted joints can be very large right for example if you have a boiler let me say boiler drum is there okay there is a boiler drum okay this is a cross sectional area let me say this is the boiler drum there can be lot of riveting right lot of riveting will be there right lot of riveting will be there lot of riveting in different directions will be there lot of riveting in different directions will be there right so if you just go on calculating the total number of rivets it, it will be become very cumulative right in total number of rivets can be very much right so what we do take okay, a lot of riveting will be there take okay, it throughout the circumference not just in one direction in many di other directions take okay? not just in one direction it will be there in many other directions right throughout the circumference and the diameters of this boiler walls are also 5 meters 10 meters ke bhi diameters rehte hain boiler drums ke right so in that case lot many rivets will come so will not take each and every rivet instead what we are going to do is instead what we are going to do is we will we will calculate we will calculate it per pitch length instead what we are going to do is we'll calculate the strength of the rivet per pitch length theek hai yahan par to maine sirf teen rivet dikhaya hai right here i have just shown three rivets but it can actually go on and on and on and on and on so we will not count the rivets we we'll just give the formula per pitch length okay good then we have it can be double rivet also for example double sear also right the searing can be double also for example if you have a butt joint and if you have a double cover plate think if you have a butt joint and there is a double cover plate let me say this is one of the rivets and this is another rivet think this is one rivet and this is another rivet right so you have riveted this you can see this is nothing else but a this is nothing else but a butt joint right is there is a riveting here right so how many cover plates are there there are two cover plates you can see there are two cover plates
so if there are two cover plates what is the possibility the possibility is that if searing has to happen theek hai na to dono jagah hona padega right searing has to happen in both the places it is not possible for the rivet to fail with only one sear right if searing has to happen it has to happen at both the places right right searing has to happen here as well as here only then only then the rivet is going to fail theek hai only then the rivet is going to fail right so means overall strength overall strength of the riveted joints has increased right so in this case what can i say the maximum shear load is p by 2 in this case maximum shear load so even if you are applying a force of p and p at both the sides even if you are applying a force of p and p at the both the sides even if you are applying p here and you are applying p here the maximum shear load that will be counted is only p by 2 maximum shear load to be counted only as p by 2 why because the load p is distributed at two cross sections because the load p is distributed at two cross sections is distributed here and here right or you can simply say the cross sectional area has doubled up right you can simply say the cross sectional area has doubled up right so i can rewrite the formula as p by 2 is equal to tau max pi by 4 d square simply by cross multiplying total total maximum maximum shear load maximum shear load without failure maximum shear load without failure is equal to 2 tau max pi by 4 d square maximum shear load without failure that is 2 tau max pi by 4 d square okay right now third type of failure is the crossing failure of the plate the third type of failure is the crossing failure of the plate the third type of failure is the crossing failure of the plate now if the load is more ठीक है इफ द लोड इज मोर ठीक है अभी यहां पर दो प्लेट होंगे एक्चुअली देयर विल बी टू प्लेट्स हियर दिस इज द सेकंड प्लेट ठीक है नाउ इफ द लोड इज मोर इफ द लोड इज मोर इफ द लोड इज मोर सो व्हाट माइट हैपन ठीक है समटाइम्स इफ इफ द मटेरियल ऑफ द रिवेट इफ द मटेरियल द रिवेट इज मेड अप ऑफ इज स्ट्रांगर देन द प्लेट इफ rivet material is stronger than that of plate then kya hoga will the rivet shear no will the rivet shear no instead what might happen is that the rivet will crush if the force is very much the force is very much the rivet will crush the plate the rivet will crush the plate so in other sense what will happen this is a very very normal thing that happens what will happen the size of the hole will get enlarged the size of the hole will get enlarged right the size of the hole will get enlarged right or in other words i can say the size of the hole will get enlarged means the rivet has crushed the the rivet has cross the plate right so what kind of what kind of strength what kind of strength what kind of failure is this this is failure in compression failure in compression of the plate failure in compression of the plate so the compressive strength is being tested so when tearing failure what kind of tension what kind of what kind of failure it was failure because failure in tension right tensile failure this is that was tearing failure of the plate was tensile failure of the plate crushing failure of the plate is the compressive failure compression failure of the plate and thereafter the searing failure of the rivet is the shear failure so all different types of stresses are 
being seen here right all different types of failures with respect to different stresses are seen here right so for this for this right how to see what is the maximum load maximum load that can be applied is the maximum load without failure maximum load without failure what is the maximum load without failure right so for that you have to see for that you have to see if you see the plate if you try to see the plate right if you see the rivet right so what is the area that is being crossed right what is the area that is being crossed that this much of area this much of area that is being crossed right this is the this is the area okay if you see from the top view okay if you see from the top view this will be the width of the area right and if you see if you use the thickness if you use the thickness this much of area will be crossed this much of area will be crossed so what is this this is nothing else but if you if you project it over a screen if you try to project this area over a screen if you try to project this area over a screen this is what it will look like right so this area this thickness is d width is d and the thickness will be the thickness of the plate that is t so here the area the projected area here the projected area projected area of the shank is projected area is p into d here the projected area is p into d here the projected area is p into d sorry not p into d am i sorry why i'm writing p into d d into t where d is the dia of the rivet where d is equal to dia of rivet of rivet and t t is the thickness and t is the thickness okay so the what the formula becomes the formula becomes something like this the maximum maximum crossing load is equal to sigma c that is compressive strength so what is sigma c that is compressive strength multiplied by the projected area that is d into d right for single rivets if there are n rivets per pitch spot length if there are n rivets per pitch length so it will become sigma c and into d into t it will become sigma c into n into d into t okay so i hope it is understood okay now there can be a question on efficiency of the joint there can be a question on the efficiency of a joint so what exactly is meant by efficiency now you have seen three types of load what are the three types of load the searing stress of the joint the tearing strength of the joint and you have seen the crossing strength of the joint right three types of three types of strength you have seen right divided by d divided by the plate which does not have any joint divided by the area of the plate which does not has any joint okay good to dekhte hain jaldi jaldi isko solve karo
tiering efficiency if i'm saying tiering efficiency what it is talking about is the if you if you remember this formula properly if you remember the formula this is the joint efficiency it is considering all three types of failures searing failure tiering failure and crossing failure the lowest of the strength divided by the total area of the plate divided by the total area of the plate p into t into right total strength of the plate right total strength of the plate so what will be the total area of the plate if you see total area of the plate per pitch length if i see per pitch length of p into t if i multiply it by sigma t that is the total maximum strength right all of us can easily do this so this is something near to that okay this has been asked in one of the uh, uh, e level psu level exams so similar kind of question has been asked If, if you are unable to do this, try this. Try this question. Try this question. So, after doing this, you might be able to answer that. Trading efficiency of a rivet is given by. Try this question. The trading efficiency of a rivet is given by. Try this question first. Then you will be able to answer that easily. Let me draw the diagram for you, for your understanding. I'm just drawing one row of rivet. Okay, very nice, good. Naveen, Guna, I'm waiting for your answer. Per pitch length. Right, this is the per pitch length. So what is the strength of the rivet per pitch length? strength of joint let me say this is p minus d into t into sigma t right divided by strength of plate Per pitch length. I can simply say P into T into sigma T. Sorry. Sigma T. So this is going to cancel out. Sigma T T will cancel out. So what is the answer? Answer is P minus D into P. P minus D into P. Very nice. Fantastic. Right. So now attempt discretion. Now attempt discretion. P minus D divided by P. This is the tearing efficiency is equal to 0 0.75. So D by P is equal to Yes. It's not I mean not here. Yeah. 
Is it clear? So what is the answer for this, Naveen? It is 0 0.25, right? It is 0 0.25. One minus d by p is equal to zero point seven five. This implies d by p is equal to zero point two five. Okay. Yes, I know you might be tired. A lot of class. Okay. Answer is B. So try to attempt this. Rivets are made up of which of the following materials? Tell me. Rivets will be made. Okay. This is a very general conceptual question. Rivets are made of which of the following materials? See, this properties you should know very properly. What do I mean by hard? What is resilient? What is ductile? What is tough? What is malleable? Okay, this properties it should be very, very clear to all of you. See, again, I'll tell you, okay, rivets, rivets will fail because of shear, right? Shear failure. Is it just yielding or is it complete break off? Okay, for all the options, okay? Hardness, hardness is related to surface, right? Hardness is related to surface. How hard is a surface? It is not a material property. It is a material property, but pertaining to the surface. surface. So rivets ke liye uska koi meaning nahi hai, right? If I said ductility, okay, if I said ductility, ductility is the capability of rolling or drawing a material, right? So definitely rivets should be ductile, lekin that is not a concern while designing, right? That is the concern while manufacturing. If only the materials are ductile, then you will be able to pro form proper rivets. But that is not with respect to designing point of view. Malleable. If you can beat a material and if you can convert it in seeds, then it is known as malleable. Right? Resilience. Resilience is the amount of, it is a capability of, it is a capability of material to absorb energy. Right? Material, what is resilience? Resilience is the capability of material to absorb energy right we have different types of resilience like proof resilience right okay so what is the tough tough means if i say the rivets are needs to be tough what do i mean if i say the rivets needs to be tough what do i mean the rivet toughness is also a different synonym of res resilience you can say but toughness is the maximum energy that rivets a material can Absorb up till failure. Maximum energy a material can absorb until failure. Maximum energy and material can absorb up until failure. Right? So Rivets, what is the total amount of energy the rivets can absorb until failure, right? That is nothing else but toughness. So, better the toughness, more the energy the rivets will absorb before failure. So, the time taken for failure will be more, or you can say you can apply more load onto the rivets. So, if you see the proper answer, the precise answer, the best answer will be toughness. Okay, other toughness. Nahi hota, after, if, if toughness wouldn't have been there, then you could have marked resilience, right? Resilience is the capability of absorbing energy. Resilience is the capability of absorbing energy, but toughness is 
maximum energy up till failure theek hai malleable means if you can beat a material and convert it into seeds for example aluminum seeds you see how are the aluminum seeds form you have rolled the material right you have beaten the material you have formed the material into seeds so capability of material to be converted into seeds is the property that is known as malleable malleability ductility means if materials can be rolled into wires can be pulled drawn into wires drawn into wires formed into seeds right so hardness again you should know what is hardness it is a surface indentation scratch prevention hardness right so all these points should be clear because yahan se questions aate hain conceptual questions easy questions that you should be able to answer right okay we can keep on discussing lot of examples i can give okay but let us now limit also to this a rivet is specified by ठीक है ए रिवर्ड इज स्पेसिफाइड बाय इट्स सैंक डायमीटर अभी देखेंगे व्हेन यू सी बोल्ट ठीक है वी विल आल्सो नीड टू गेट टू नो व्हाट इज ए सैंक डायमीटर राइट वी विल सी व्हाट इज ऐसे क्वेश्चंस आते हैं स्मॉल स्मॉल क्वेश्चंस माइट बी आस्क्ड ठीक है बेसिक स्मॉल क्वेश्चंस माइट बी आस्क्ड दिस इज नॉट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डिजाइनिंग ठीक है दिस इज नॉट इन नथिंग मच विद रिस्पेक्ट टू डिजाइनिंग बट ठीक है सम सम थिंग्स यू कैन एक्चुअली अंडरस्टैंड राइट सो ट्राई दिस क्वेश्चन ए बॉयलर प्लेट ऑफ थिकनेस 20 एमएम डू यू नो I'll tell you there is unwind formula. For deciding diameter of rivet. So, what should be the diameter, approximate diameter of the rivet? It is given by one of the formula that is known as unwind formula, right? So, it is dependent on the thickness of the plate that needs to be riveted. ठीक है, so dia of rivet is equal to six times root over the thickness of the plate. This formula is known as the rivet unwind formula, right? If sometimes this is directly asked, or sometimes this kind of small questions can might be given, right? Dia of rivet. But generally we don't remember this formula. ठीक है, engineering service में हो सकता है एक बार कहीं use हुआ हो, but generally we don't remember this formula because this formula there are so many formulas you cannot keep on remembering all the formulas so all the formulas are listed in the design data book right so whoever needs to design requires some any any information they can refer to design data book right you cannot remember so many formulas but some of the formulas have been asked in exams repeatedly you have seen theek hai so those formulas it's okay good to remember those forms for example unwind formula is one of those so what is the answer jaldi jaldi batao jaldi jaldi answer is also important here give me the answer fast 20 ka root over kitna aayega approximately see numerical problem since you don't have the calculator you have to do you have to learn little bit of approximation also is good navi i hope you are not using your calculator you have to use little bit of approximation you should, you should know little bit of approximation right root over 20 If you see root over twenty, if you see root over twenty, what, where it will lie? It will lie some somewhere between four and five, somewhere between four and five. Let me say four point five, four point five into six. If you say, right, root over twenty will lie somewhere between four and five because root over sixteen is four, root over twenty five is five, so root over twenty is. root 5 yeah as we can say if you remember if you can remember uh, root over 5 then also it is okay yeah got it got it ठीक है, so yes, you can also remember some of the common root overs, right? You can also remember some of the common root overs like root two, root three, root five. These are very common common root overs, right? Better to remember these values so that it helps in your calculation. Very nice, very good, fantastic. 
ठीक है सो नाउ लेट अस मूव ऑन टू बोल्टेड जॉइंट्स लेट अस नाउ मूव ऑन टू बोल्टेड जॉइंट्स ठीक है सो इफ यू सी दिस इज द हेड ऑफ अ बोल्ट नाउ बोल्टेड जॉइंट्स और रिवेटेड जॉइंट्स आर ऑलमोस्ट सिमिलर अपार्ट फ्रॉम द फैक्ट दैट अपार्ट फ्रॉम द फैक्ट दैट ठीक है बोल्टेड जॉइंट्स आर नॉन परमानेंट whereas riveted joints can be said to be permanent otherwise the type of failures are almost same bolted joints and riveted joints the type of failures are almost same apart from one thing that i am going to tell you theek okay? hai apart from one thing that i am going to tell you theek okay? hai okay now if i say bolted joints if i say bolted joints if i say bolted joints theek okay? hai so this is the sank of the bolted joint this is the threaded portion this is the head ठीक है, so diameter of shank is d, this is also known as nominal diameter. or major diameter, right? dc is the core diameter. or minor dia. you can see dc here, this is dc. you can see d here right so how is the how is the bolt specified a bolt is specified by its shank diameter by its shank diameter this will be the weaker portion tell me which is the weaker portion is the shank weaker or the threaded portion weaker is the shank weaker or the threaded portion weaker which is the which is going to be the weaker portion are dc smaller than d na so the weaker portion will be the threaded portion nice take a weaker weak portion will be the threaded portion so similar kind of small basic understanding is required okay so there can be four types of threads okay bolted joints mein there can be four types of threads the maximum use is v threads ठीक है, what is the angle 60 degree? What is the angle 60 degree? ठीक है, sometimes one type of thread that is known as acme thread is used. ठीक है, what is acme thread? In acme thread, this angle, you can see it is combination. Before okay, before getting into acme thread, let me say this is the square threads. V threads mostly used. where do we use square threads square threads are used for bends wise lead screw similar kind of applications theek okay? hai similar kind of applications square threads are used theek okay? i am not going into detail why what is used how is used theek okay? hai utna nahi ja raha hai theek okay? hai bas thoda sa remember kar lijiye theek okay? hai what is acme thread you can see acme thread is combination of v and square threads combi of v n square sometimes this question is being asked ye angle kitna hai this angle in v threads is 29 degree this angle in v threads is 29 degree sometimes this is hard because this is unusual kind of angle right buttress thread it is generally used in power screws power screw me use hota hai helps in power transmission theek okay? it helps in you can see it helps in power transmission in one direction theek okay? and it resist resist the movement in the other direction power transmission in one direction right for example the screw jack even if you see the screw jack right screw jack while while lifting the lifting a vehicle to change its tires we use a screw jack right the screw jack moves only in one direction right power transmission if you want to see the power transmission the power transmission generally happens only in one direction it gets locked right after you move it it gets locked so what kind of you threads are used but rest thread but rest thread so this kind of sm small small questions might be asked okay tell me when it is done we'll move ahead then we want it when it is done we'll move ahead
Okay. Now, from voltage joints, okay, much question. It is difficult, right? Because it is highly numerical in nature. Take okay, questions are highly numerical in nature, hai, right? Two types of questions might be asked. One in theoretical question, I'll, I'll tell you, and something will understand the type of loading. Okay, basic. Ye bhi thoda sa, uh, we are not going into the numerical part, but we are understanding how the numerical will be solved. How the numerical will be solved. Okay. Now this is pertaining this instead of bolted, it can also be riveted joint. This kind of questions can be also there for riveted joints. Yes, a zaruri nahi hai ki ye bolts hi ho. This can also be rivets. This four I'm talking about can also be rivet. It's not necessary that they are bolts. Okay. So it can be used in both way. Rivets or bolts. Okay. Let us try to understand. Okay. Now a load P is applied. You can see the load is an eccentric load. It is not directly on the top of the rivets or the bolts. Right. It is it is at a certain distance. What is the distance? It is at a certain distance. It is at a distance E. It is at a distance E from the center of the bolts, from the center of the whole joint, center of the joint, right? Is there a distance E from the center of the joint? I can say this is to be the center of the joint. I can say this is the center of the joint, right? Okay, so now okay, we'll come to the important point. Okay, we'll come to the important point. Now, whenever this kind of loading is done, there are two types of loading that happens. That is actually withstand by the bolts. First of all, first of all, right? That is the direct shear load. Direct shear load. When we apply a load like this, the load has to be now. See, for a joint, for a system to be in equilibrium, for a system to be in equilibrium. Can I say summation of force in y direction equal to zero? For the system in to be in equilibrium, the summation of force system has to be in equilibrium. Now the summation of force in the y direction has to be zero. So there is a force P in the downward direction. So there has to be a force P in the upward direction. So who is going to apply the force P in the upward direction? The bolts. How? P by four. P by four, P by four. Yes or no? Tell me. Good. I, I hope you're being able to understand, right? So this four loads are called direct shear. These four loads are called direct shear. These are called direct shear. Direct shear load. Right? So here I have represented it in this way. If you see, okay, I have not written P by 4, P by 4, P by 4, P by 4. I have simply written, I have simply written, okay, P1. P3, P4, P2. I can say, I can definitely say here that P1, P2, P3, P4, P1, P1 is equal to P2 is equal to P3 is equal to P4 is equal to P by 4. So what is this? This is direct shear. This is direct shear. Okay. Now there is one more type of load. Now there is one more type of load. What is the type of load? That is the moment. Okay. If you take a moment about point O. If you take moment about point O. Okay. Isko mein remove kar deta hon, okay. I'm removing this. If I take moment about point O. Let me say this is point O. Let me say this is point O. If I take moment about point O. Okay. 
summation of moment about point O again it should also be zero. Moment about point O should also be zero. The joint has to be in equilibrium. Nah? It is not moving. The joint is not moving. Right? So if moment about point O is zero, you can see there is a clockwise moment P into E. Can see there is a clockwise moment p into e right because of this p a clockwise moment is there yes or no there is a clockwise moment p into e right so to counter counter this clockwise moment there has to be anti-clockwise moment set up by the vaults there has to be anti-clockwise moment set up by the vaults so how is that anti-clockwise moment going to be right so if you want to see the anti clockwise moments take the radius take the radius right so anti clockwise moment will be set up by the balls in some this direction something like this four different forces again four different forces will be set up like this i have given the name to these forces as P1 des, P2 des, P3 des, P4 des. See, if you consider any one force, if you consider any one force, it is setting up an anti clockwise moment. If you see any one force, it is setting up an anti clockwise moment. Can you feel that? Where you force Lelo? You take any force. Let me say P4 des. Let me say P4 des. Let me say P4 des. Okay. Can you feel that it is setting up an anti clockwise moment? Yes or no? Can you see that the P4 des it is setting up an anti clockwise moment? Right? So similarly, all the all the forces will set up anti-clockwise moment. So ultimately, what it will become like, it will become like this, right? P into E, this is the clockwise moment set up by the external force, is equal to P1 des into R. That is R is the R is the radius from the center of the joint to the volts plus P2 des R plus P3 des R plus p4 des r right by symmetry in this case i can see that p1 des p2 des p3 des p4 des will be equal because they are equidistant from this center o right so in this case i can definitely say i can take r common okay i can take r common okay and i can say p1 des is equal to p2 des is equal to p3 des is equal to p4 des is equal to P into E divided by 4 times R. P into E divided by 4 times R. In this case, I can say. But if the configuration changes, it might be different. But this is the way to analyze a joint. This is the way to analyze a joint. So, this loads are called secondary shear load. Secondary. The shear load generated because of the twisting moment. The shear load generated because of the twisting moment. Because of twisting moment. The shear load generated because of twisting moment is called secondary shear load. And it is represented by P1 dash, P2 dash, P3 dash, P4 dash. Okay. Now tell me, my question to you. Mera question hai. What is my question to you? Which of... Which bolt is most... Critically loaded. Critically 
क्रिटिकली लोडेड आप बता सकते हैं यहां पर कैन यू टेल मी विच बोल्ट इज मोस्ट क्रिटिकली लोडेड इन दिस फिगर इन दिस जॉइंट कैन यू टेल मी विच बोल्ट इज मोस्ट क्रिटिकली लोडेड इन दिस फिगर ये फिगर ले लीजिए आप ठीक है यू टेक दिस फिगर आई एम हाईलाइटिंग द फिगर फॉर यू ये फिगर लीजिए सॉरी take this figure take and tell me uh, use your logic use your logic and tell me which bolt is most critically loaded which bolt is most likely to fail first which bolt is most likely to fail first kaun sa bolt sabse pehle fail hone ke chances hai which bolt is most critically loaded language can be changed the meaning is same right or you can say which bolt has the maximum stress which bolt has the maximum load over it which bolt will fail first which bolt is most critically loaded or it can go on this is a type of question that can be asked there are lot many questions hidden inside it questions can be from P3 and P4. P3 and P4 are both of them are critically loaded. Yes. P3 and P4 both of them are critically loaded. You are right. Guess why? You know. So lot of questions hidden inside this topic. Okay. First of all, question about direct shear. Question about indirect shear. Right. There is a secondary shear. Right. Question about most critically loaded and even a simple numerical question being asked okay like you may you might be asked you might be given this figure you might be given a load p of say 50 kilo newton right size of the bolts what is the max what is the direct shear load on the bolt one or we can be asked what is the direct indirect shear load in the bolt one so similar kind of questions might be asked right if you go for gate gate will ask you a very good lend equation where it is a very very favorite topic for gate eccentric loading of bolted joints in bolted joint we very favorite favorite topic of gate every two to every alternate years they will ask equation definitely from this topic thing with different figures right but with respect to psu definitely uh, they are not going to ask because it is going to be highly calculative you see the resultant maximum resultant the maximum resultant of the direct shear load and the secondary shear load will either be at this position because the angle between the loads is minimum right rather than here here if, if you see the load is cancelling each other the direct and secondary shear load are cancelling each other to some extent okay so even without any calculation even without any calculation we can simply say that this two joints that is joint 3 and 4 are most critically loaded Joint three and four are most critically loaded. Is it clear, all of you? Okay, good. So one more question that can be asked is one more question that can be asked. It is a theoretical question. Okay, is a theoretical question. That is. Give me the answer here itself. I put the question here. Let's go here. Let's get on the question. If the bolt is tightened, what kind of stress will be generated in the bolt? If the Bolt is tightened. 
using a screw. The stress in the bolt will be bolt ko tight kar raha hai. If I am tightening a bolt using a nut, take a screw ni bowling a nut bowling a sorry. Using a nut. What kind of stress to rehega? Let me let me try to explain you using a figure. Take a thoda sa easy easy bolt me dal thong. Take it. Let me use a figure. Take it. Let me say this is a one plate and this is another plate. I use the bolt See here. Then I use a hexagonal nut. It's not done. Okay, let me say this is one plate. And this is the other plate. You can see, take it. Then I use a hexagonal nut. Tighten the bolt. To tighten the, to tighten the, I hope you can see this. Now, if I keep on tightening the nut, if I keep on tightening the nut, if I keep on tightening the nut, just try to imagine what will happen to the shank and the threaded portion of the bolt. If I keep on tightening the, if I keep on tightening the, if I keep on tightening the, If I keep on tightening the what will happen to the threaded portion? Stress will increase. What kind of stress will be there? Professor, imagine Karu, what kind of stress will be there? Main point is not to tell you, you should be able to feel it. Okay. If directly not being if you're not being able to feel it. Okay. Let me see. Let me draw a different board. Okay, for you. Okay. I'm not drawing separately the threaded portion and all. Okay, just simply I'm trying to draw the board. Really, really fast. Okay, there are two plates. Then there is the nut. nut let me make it good. Okay, Abhi Sayed, you might be able to feel it a little bit. No, okay, bolt will not get into torsion. Okay, bolt will not get into torsion. What will happen as you tighten the nut? What will happen to the length of the bolt? 
the length of the bolt will increase or decrease the shank portion this will remain constant this portion ka length will remain constant but otherwise the length of the bolt will increase or decrease it will increase right the length of the bolt will increase the bolt will not be under torsion the bolt will not be under torsion okay the maximum stress that will be the bolt will be under that is under because of tension okay the bolt as we tighten the bolt what will happen to the bolt the bolt will be under tension will be under tension bolt will be under tension right so the failure of the bolt will result from tension so what to do how to prevent this can you tell me how to prevent this is it is it is it possible to prevent this how to prevent this if the bolt fails the bolt there is a very good possibility that the bolt fails by tension there is a very good possibility that the bolt fails by tension if you keep on tightening 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 if the material of the plates have good strength means the materials are not getting crushed right there is a very big possibility that the bolt will actually fail because of tension right so what to do we can actually pre compress the bolts bolts ko kya kar sakte hain we can pre compress the bolts what do i mean by pre compress the bolts i will induce compressive stress then i will put the bolt and tighten the nut so i will induce some pre compressed stresses means by some some way okay there are different material methods to do this okay i will induce pre compressed stresses compressive stresses on the bolts before tightening the bolt so once what i do tightening tighten the bolt once i compress the bolts and tighten the bolt what will happen this will actually reduce okay this the failure the failure the chances of failure of the bolt will reduce okay sometimes i also use pre tensed okay pre induced tensile stress in the bolts why can i use pre induced tensile stress in the bolts can you tell me sometimes i can also use pre induced generally this is done in riveting riveting mein hota hai the rivets will be ten rivet, rivet will have pre induced tension can you feel it no okay i'll tell you why okay i'll tell you why yahan par again i'll tell you the bolts are under tension the failure because of the bolts might result because of the tensile failure of the bolts right so what we will do you will induce compressive stress for example the maximum tensile force is going to 100 pascal 100 mega pascal so what we are going to do will induce a compressive stress of say minus 20 mega pascal pehle isi rakh denge so when the bolt is not fitted and the uh, uh, and the nut is tight right when the maximum tensile stress that the bolt will be subjected to 80 mega pascal right now why because i have already pre induced 20 mega pascal of compressive stress right that is a way to prevent the bolt from failure okay that is a way to prevent the bolt from failure okay now pre tensed rivets are sometimes used to produce leak proof joints to produce leak proof joints i will extend the rivets then i will join it so after joining it what will happen the rivets will the rivets will actually try to come to its original position which will result in very tighter joints theek hai questions aa sakte hain i am just trying to give you an idea theek hai uh you tr go through the question booklet with the questions that has been provided right you go through the questions that has been provided you will get to know different types of questions that might be asked okay different types of questions might be asked okay okay now let us get into welded joints let us get into welded joints so welded joints again it can be two types okay butt weld joint fillet weld joint butt weld joint fillet weld joint okay you can see this type of joints are known as butt weld this type of joints are known as fillet weld okay similar kind of lap joint lap joint is known as fillet joint right but joint is the same name even in rivet or even welded joints
Okay. Now, be the bud joint of fill or the fillet joint, it can be classified into parallel bud and transverse bud. How? That is the on the nature of application of force. Please understand. This is the important point to understand. Okay. If you are applying the force like this, that is perpendicular to the joint. If you are applying the force perpendicular to the joint, it is called as transverse bud joint. It is designed for tension. It is designed for tensile failure. Now, if the force is applied in this direction, that is parallel, parallel to the parallel to the joint, it is known as parallel but joint, and it is designed for shear. We'll have a better understanding when we'll go and uh, going to see see the different designing aspects. Okay. Similarly, fillet joint may be same. Eh? If the force is applied perpendicular to the joint, if force is applied perpendicular to the joint, it is called transverse but joint. Okay. If force is perpendicular to the joint, transverse. If I'm saying transverse, what does it mean? Force or external load. load is perpendicular to joint to the joint right if i am saying parallel if i am saying parallel what does it mean parallel means external load is parallel to the joint external load is parallel to the joint okay okay we are going to see the designing part also we are going to see the designing part also okay Now, we're going to see the maximum shear in parallel fillet joint. If I'm saying parallel fillet, fillet joint, take a parallel fillet to pair, take it. Which one is the parallel? This is the fillet. Okay. Parallel means load is acting parallel to the joint. Okay. okay. Let me give you an overview. Yeah, it is shown here. Nice, fantastic. This is a parallel fill. You can see these are the welds. This double weld. It is double weld filling. Now, we have to know a few things before, before actually knowing the formula. So, this is an approximate diagram of the weld. This is an approximate diagram of the weld. Which, which weld we are talking about? We are talking about this weld. We can approximate the cross-sectional area to be a triangle. We can approximate the cross-sectional area to be a triangle. This cross-sectional area, we can approximate it to be a triangle. 
even though it is not a triangle you can approximate it to be a triangle okay so this is what you're looking at this is what you're looking at what you're looking at is the cross sectional area of the joint now what is a throat throat is the minimum cross sectional area okay or you can you can say it this way okay you could see this way if you're looking at from the side view you look look this will look like a triangle this will look like a triangle take it this will look like a triangle take it cross sectional area actually depends on the type of loading what kind of loading you are applying the cross sectional area depends on it okay so if you see if you see this this portion of the area this portion of the area this portion of the area is known as the throat this portion of the area is the throat so what is the throat if you want to define throat throat is the minimum cross sectional area minimum cross sectional area what is throat throat is the minimum cross sectional area right it can be derived it can be found out okay by differentiating we have some equations and it can be found out okay so the length of the throat is given by t this this not the length exactly the thickness this dimension the this dimension is given as t we consider this angle as 45 so the value of t actually it becomes h you can see this this way okay you can see in this two triangle this triangle and this triangle you can just take these two triangles right since this angle is 45 this angle is also 45 right this angle is 90 this is 45 so this is also 45 so what can i say i can say that i can say that this is equal to this this is equal to this right all these three sides are equal all the three sides are equal right so in that case what can i write i can write h as h is equal to this h i am talking about you can closely see h is equal to b e plus e c that is equal to 2 times b e that is equal to 2 times t cos theta where theta is equal to 45 i'll directly write as cos 45 degree that is equal to 2 into t into cos 45 is 1 by root 2 right that is equal to root 2 times t so h is equal to root 2 times t or i can say the throat is equal to h by root 2 that is equal to 0.707 times h okay so you remember all of you remember this formula this is important this is the most important i think concept that the thickness of the throat is equal to 0.707 into h and what is h what is h it is the weld you can say root thickness okay i'm dicking this is we will see we'll see to this okay what exactly is h okay Okay, what is h? You can say this is the root, root thickness, or you can say it is the leg length, right? So if you see this joint, the joint, the length of the joint is L. The leg length is h, right? Thickness, what is thickness t? This is nothing else but throat thickness. Throat thickness is t. That is h cos 45. That is equal to 0.707 h, right? So for double fillet, okay, double fillet, okay, of let us let us say for single fillet, what will be the maximum p max maximum amount of force that can be applied? P max is equal to because the parallel fillet, the parallel fillet will be fail because of shear. So tau max into the cross sectional area. Cos 
cross sectional area. So what is the cross sectional area? You can see the cross sectional area will be is equal to the cross sectional area is is equal to throat multiplied by delight, isn't it? The cross sectional area will be throat. This is the throat multiplied by the length of the weld. Okay, minimum cross sectional area. So better to say minimum cross sectional area instead of saying cross sectional area. Let us say minimum. Because when the cross sectional area is minimum, what will the stress? Stress will be maximum. When the cross sectional area is minimum, the stress will be maximum. Why? Because we know that stress, shear stress. If you talk about shear stress, this is force divided by area. So when cross sectional area is minimum, the stress is maximum. Right? So P max is equal to tau max into minimum cross sectional area, and minimum cross sectional area is at the throat. Minimum cross sectional area is at the throat. At the throat. Right? So thickness of the throat is T, length of the weld is L. So minimum cross sectional area is T into L. So P max can be written as tau max 0.707 HL. 0.707 HL. So if it is double double fillet, there are two fillet wells, two fillet wells, okay. Simply the formula will become tau max into 2 into 707 H because the cross sectional area will get doubled. Because the cross sectional area will get doubled. So two things, two to three things that you need to remember here, okay. Whatever you have learned here. First of all, what is the throat? Throat is the minimum cross sectional area. What is the Thickness of the throat, okay, thickness of the throat area is 0 0.707 into h, where h is the length, length, right? Then what is the value of p max? P max is equal to tau max into for double fillet joint, tau max into 2 into 707 HL for single fillet, tau max, p max is equal to tau max 707 HL, right? Then you have to learn one more thing that is at where does the throat, at what angle is the throat? The throat is at an angle of 45 degree at an angle of 45 degree to the leg right it is at an angle of 45 degree theta is equal to 45 degree right so throat occurs at the length of 45 degree right then one more thing that you have to remember is that parallel fillet joints they fail because of shear if I'm talking about parallel fillet, if I'm talking about parallel fillet, parallel fillet, they fail. Why do they fail? They fail because of shear. Parallel fillet, they fail because of shear. Parallel fillet fail because of C. So this many things you need to remember. This many things you need to remember. Parallel fillet fails because of shear. The throat is a minimum cross section area. Throat is at the angle of 45 degree. Thickness of the throat is equal to 0.707 H. Okay. Then uh, P max for double fillet is equal to tau max into. These formulas are important. Directly the formula is might be asked. It has been seen that directly the formula is asked for double fillet or single fillet. Okay. Okay. Now, if I see about transverse fillet, everything is seen. Everything is seen. The only fact is that transverse fillet will fail because of tension. because of tension okay everything else is same everything else is same the only fact is the only fact that changes that it fails because of tension okay transverse fillet as you can see the load is perpendicular to the joint The load is perpendicular to the joint. Okay. Otherwise, if you see the formula is same for double fillet, 
for single fillet exactly the same formula apart from the fact that apart from the fact that instead of shear stress you're going to use tensile stress apart from shear stress you're going to use tensile stress or you can say yield strength or tensile strength whatever you want to say whatever is given in the equation would be better okay so let me see this is a welded joint two plates are welded this way okay so the shear strength is tau and in question let me say tensile strength is sigma t right so or simply sigma so what is the what is the maximum load that can be safely applied can you tell me okay try to form the equation what is the maximum we will have another i think not much another 10 minutes of class in another 10 minutes we'll end up okay this chapter will be completed after that i think we will require two more classes we'll require two more classes we'll finish up machine design in another two more classes Can you form the equation? Sara same same hai. single fillet to 0 0.707 H into L. Okay. Only thing is that that will vary is the tensile strength. I hope you have formed. Okay. So the maximum P maximum that can be applied is equal to. So this is you can see this is parallel fillet. You can see this is also parallel fillet, but however, this is tense. This is transverse fillet. Okay, so P max I can say it is equal to zero point seven zero seven. It will come everywhere. 0 0.707 will come everywhere right so i have taken it common in every expression so the parallel fillet will fail on the shear tau into l1 h1 plus tau into l3 h3 plus sigma into l2 h2 right is it clear they click a formula you see the formula if you are confused with the formula you see the formula maximum load is equal to because all are single here here we are looking for single joint single joint single fillet joint sigma 0 0.707 hl okay if you say for single fillet Trans parallel fillet comics 0.707 hl because the formula is 0.707 hl that's why i said t is equal to 7 0.707 h that is the most important thing if you can remember that everything else is simple so what is p max now p max is equal to 0.707 tau into l1 h1 plus tau in, uh, into l3 h3 the parallel will fail because of the the parallel fillet joint will fail because of the shear and the transverse fillet will fail because of the tensile. Okay, I hope it is clear. Okay, let us answer this question first. The 60 mm long and 6 mm thick fillet weld carries a 15 kilonewton along the length the shear strength of the weld is 200 megapascal the factor of safety is the factor of safety is 
can try to calculate so what is the length given as length is 60 mm what is the thickness thickness of the fillet weld is given right thickness of the fillet weld means what is given is the leg length at is equal to 6 mm carries a load p is equal to 15 kilo newton and the shear strength tau is equal to 200 mega pascal shear strength tau is equal to 200 mega pascal okay so can i calculate the maximum what is the maximum load that can be applied to this weld what is the maximum load p max what is the maximum load that can be applied it is tau max into 0 0.707 hl that is equal to 200 into 0 0.707 into 60 into what is the length l l is somewhere around uh, it is given it is sorry it is 6 into 60 6 into 60 right so what is factor of safety factor of safety is equal to the load applied p divided by p max that is equal to 15 divided by 200 into 0 0.707 into 6 into 60. Sorry, ulta kar diya. 1 upon factor of safety. P max by P, sorry. P max by P. Factor of safety will always be greater than 1. So 200 into 0 0.707 into 6 into 60 divided by 15. 15 this is 4 right so if you calculate it it will come out to somewhere around 3.4 15 kilo newton 15 kilo newton means 15 into 10 to the power 3 15 into 10 to the power 3 so it will come out somewhere around 3.4 okay similarly about parallel butt joint okay this is the parallel butt joint you can see the parallel butt joint what is the cross-sectional area the cross-sectional area is directly i can write it as h into t sorry h into l cross section here there is no concept of minimum cross section cross section is directly h into l right so parallel parallel butt joint will fail because of shear parallel butt joint will fail because of shear right so the shear stress in the butt is weld is equal to force divided by the cross section area right here the throat thickness is same as of the part thickness here the throat thickness is same as that of the part thickness okay so similarly transverse butt joint you must now understand transverse butt joint will fail because of tensile all the transverse joints they fail because of tensile load and the parallel butt joint they fail because of the shear load right formula is exactly the same but instead of shear load what will happen here you'll have the tensile stress because instead of shear stress there will be tensile stress here okay so let us do a question a simple question right this kind of questions are very probable transverse fillet weld joints are designed for so all the transverse welds they're designed for what tensile strain okay all the transverse fillet welded joints are designed for tensile strain so what you need to do you have to this is the very simple question okay this kind of concepts you have to remember and apart from that you have to remember the formulas also Okay, general numerical questions are not asked because it is very, very simple. Okay, so tell me this answer. In combined parallel and transverse fillet, the welded joints are.
This is what we have discussed. This is what we have discussed today. Can you give me the answer fast? Hmm. Just now you have seen that transverse fillet are designed for tension, whereas parallel fillet are designed for CA. Isn't it? Right? This is what you have seen. Okay? This is one of the important concepts. Okay? Even if you see here, what I have written here, the, the transverse portion I have used sigma and the other portions what I have used is tau. Right? So what should be the answer then in that case? What should be the answer? The transverse portion will fail because of tension and D, whereas the parallel portion will fail because of C. The answer will be B. The answer will be B. Okay. So this is something very conceptual to remember about, about the welded joints. So I think almost all, all the theoretical portions that could be asked is covered. Okay, from the joints perspective. Okay, you can revise this two hours lecture. You can revise this two hours lecture, and I can I you can really hope that you can bang all the questions that are being asked in your HL paper. Okay. I hope. Do you have any doubt? You can ask if you have any doubt. You can ask if you have any doubt. Okay, thank you in that case. Thank you in that case. Good night. See you again tomorrow. We have a class tomorrow from 5 to 7 in the evening. And by Sunday, we'll complete machine design. By Sunday, we'll complete machine design. Good night.